Hey guys, Media Brothers Chris Tomer here on this Friday with this morning mountain weather update. And we do have snow this morning falling. This is up at Whistler Blackcomb. It's snow roughly above 5,000 feet, kind of a rain snow mix around 4,500 to 5,000, and then rain below that. But uh, love seeing this. You can see it on the Blackcomb Mountain Cam at 6,100 feet. It's snowing there. Snowing up at 7,600, 7,100 feet on Whistler Peak. Every once in a while, this Roundhouse Lodge Cam will show something nice. But there's definitely snow up there. It's rain at uh, the base. You can see how wet the camera lens is. The uh, concrete's all wet and uh, snow up on the Glacier Express as well at 7,000. So that's where we're seeing action this morning. In fact, here is the water vapor satellite imagery. So there is our storm system right here. You can see it plowing into BC, and that's what's uh, driving all of that, uh, that precip this morning, all that snow above 5,000. This is also going to be our windy storm system. So let me just kind of mark this storm track, a little bit of a dip in the jet right here. Now, as this comes across the northern tier, it's going to, it's going to push hard on the pressure gradient. And we're going to have a windy afternoon today through probably midday Saturday. Strong winds in Montana, parts of Idaho, Wyoming, Utah, and also Colorado. So a bit of a wind event shaping up as this crosses. The precip with this is mainly going to stay to the north with dry weather across a lot of the Intermountain West and just wind as this thing comes through. But look at all the dry air still here across the lower 48, across uh, the Intermountain, across the West Coast. There's just a ton of that dry air. All right, so here are my bullet points with this uh, update this morning. So that snow up in BC, generally above 5,000. That's where you're going to find your best accumulation. Uh, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, Utah, win this afternoon through probably midday on Saturday. I'll show you some of the gusts here in a second. Otherwise, we're dealing with high pressure across the Intermountain West for most of this time period. Now, there is a little bit of a storm system very late. I'll show you that on the forecast radar and satellite, but uh, by and large, it is a dry stretch for the, uh, the Intermountain West. So my latest forecast gusts, max gusts, uh, Grand Teton 75 between this afternoon and midday tomorrow. 75 mile per hour uh, peak gust. Long's Peak 60. Kings has come down a little bit to 45. Granite's holding at 80 mile an hour gust. Gannett has gone up a little bit to 70 mile per hour gust. So that's one of the weather stories, the wind. And you can see it here. This is Cameron Pass in Colorado, your time slice through the atmosphere uh, of relative humidity. Very dry. It's all dominated by dry, by dry air at all levels. Uh, but you can see I, I sort of highlighted and circled the area of wind that's going to come through this afternoon, tonight, and tomorrow morning. You can see the wind barbs there at, at pretty much all levels. A couple of flags at times, so 50 knots or more of wind. Uh, in fact, all the way down to the ridge top and to the, uh, the peak levels. So this is going to be a strong wind that translates all the way down um, to, the, to, the, to the high peaks, to all of the terrain features. Okay, let's talk about the jet stream. So by close of business today, you can see the little kink in the jet. That's our storm system, and that's going to swing through the northern tier. All right, here's Saturday. By late in the day, it's already moved out. Then we're back to high pressure and calmer weather for most of the Intermountain. Um, and I'm just going to let this thing roll, 10-9, 10-10. You can see the dip in the jet coming, but watch what happens as it moves in. This is Saturday, 10-12, and there'll be a little bit of precip and wind with this, but it's getting cut off. It's going to be left for dead. The main jet is still running up into parts of Canada and BC, leaving it behind, and then it just fades by 1013. So again, like I said yesterday, it's not a significant area of low pressure late in the period. It gets cut off. All right, so here we go with the forecast radar and satellite. So this is by 530 this afternoon. You can see the rain and the snow in the Pacific Northwest and BC. Um, that's our windy storm. Then it rolls across there Saturday morning. It's totally dry, lower 48 through the Intermountain West. There's Sunday. There's Monday. Another storm rolls into BC and uh, a lot of the, uh, the northern latitudes of BC into the Northwest Territories. But then we look ahead. Here's 1010, 1011. Here comes our storm system from the Pacific on 1012, 1013. Starts to move in, but again, it, it kind of gets cut off. There's a little bit of precip here through parts of Nevada and Idaho, Utah, Colorado, and some cloud cover as well. But um, this storm system just does not have a lot of moisture with it as it kind of, again, gets cut off. All right, as far as uh, snowfall goes, it's all up there in BC, kind of brushing Baker, maybe a touch of snow on Rainier. Um, and also through the interior parts of BC, you're going to get some snow. 
uh, higher up. Uh, right along that coastal range, like I was saying, it's probably 4,500 to 5,000 feet. That's going to be your rain snow line. Let me zoom in on that. You can tell, yeah, there is going to be accumulation. That's what we're seeing right now through Whistler and Blackcomb. Um, the heavier amounts are going to be in the purple shades, and that's going to take you up through the northern coastal range into the uh, northern latitudes of uh, parts of B.C. So there you go, guys. That's going to be the story. We've got some snow falling now up in parts of uh, B.C., but then it's wind as the storm system cruises through the northern tier and really pushes on the pressure gradient pretty hard. All right, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in here on this Friday. Have a great day, and I'll talk with you later.